there's so many wonderful memories of this building that we haven't been back to in a long while. So it's, I feel like I'm going to be channeling some extra people. I'm enjoying it. So I work in acrylics because I find them to be very versatile. And as you can tell from the paint, you can get real strong and vibrant, and you can get soft. The big one is almost watercolor in stock. Um, a lot of my artist friends have said that they don't like the acrylics because they don't move right. And that can be the case with the heavy bodied acrylics. So what I found a few years back was the glazing liquid, which will thin the paints, but it keeps them sticky, so they'll stick to the canvas, whereas if you just use water, you have a tendency to just run. And this one, with the vibrant colors, that was all done with glazing liquid. So you can blend as much as you want with as much strength or softness just by using this. I don't care personally for any retardants or slow drying stuff. This is what I've worked with for years. So now, to show you my palette, they've come out with um, soft body acrylics, which are terrific, but for me, they're too soft. They're transparent. They don't have as much color in them. So I use them all. I have the heavy body across the top, a soft body, and then I have running here together is um, gesso and the glazing liquid. So I mix them together. I take the heavy body and mix it with the soft body, and that way I get to have the consistency I want, but still be adding color and grip and opacity to the color so I don't have to thin it out so much. So I don't work much for photographs. I mean, it, <clears throat> these are my photographs. Uh, my Queen Anne's Lace, that's my brother's house in the background. <laughs> And I've taken these photographs and turned them into the ones that I have here with the put in place. So I do use, use the photographic reference for like architecture where the building has to look like what it's supposed to look like. Or for flowers and things that um, have to look kind of specific. Here's another painting that I did. That's Queen Anne's Lakes. All from those really bad photos. So, since I don't work from, <coughs> excuse me, from a reference that I can show you what I'm going to try and paint tonight, I thought I'd do something like this. Uh, I think I did this one in the workshop. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is reverse it. In other words, have a big sky and a little bit of land so that it's different. But that's basically the same kind of thing. So I will just start painting. And if you have any questions, please what do, you, what do you use the gesso for when you're painting? I use it as a medium. It gives me volume, okay. which helps spread out the paint. It changes the consistency, um, but it really, even though it's white, it really doesn't come through as white. Okay. So when it dries, it kind of fades right in, and that's the only thing you have to remember is you may be using it as white, but it isn't real. It's not it will go away. Yeah. Same thing with the white that's um, soft body. It'll look white on the palette, but when you paint with it, it it's transparent. It is, yeah. So you're not getting the white whites. So um, 
For my palette, these are the colors that I use. I have a very warm palette. I don't have a lesson crimson in there. I don't have uh, ultramarine blue. All those are way better to pull for me. So my colors are all warm, and that's just the way I like to do it. I don't paint according to what's in as far as decor. I had friends who said, you should use different colors. I can't. When it gets too cool for me, I throw it in the bin. I just can't use that color. And that's usually what happens when I start looking at a painting and I don't like it. I usually ask that question. Why don't I like it? What's wrong with it? It's usually too cool for me. So. Um, I've got um, chaotic yellow, medium, orange, cat orange. Um, there's a cad red, which is this, which is a not bad um, brand of paint. I bought through Jerry's, I believe. It's kind of mid medium, middle of the road. It's not heavy body, but it's not real runny. So I like that. Um, excuse me? What brand is it? Amsterdam, yeah. yeah. This is the expert series, and they've got different series on that. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got burnt sienna, which I use a lot of. It makes some great grays. I remember Josie, years ago, said, never paint with mud. And I always paint with mud. And maybe that's, <laughs> that's me. I'm, I'm a landscaper for 30 years. So mud is my business. <laughs> and I just like the way it makes grays and it makes a nice dark. Um, I've got uh, cerulean blue. That's the only blue that I use. Um, Jenkins green is a bluer green. And, and that's this one. It's the open, it's the softer. Sap is the warmer green. And I use both of them because sometimes when I'm working on um, horizon greens in the background, I want them just a little bit bluer, but I don't really want blue blue because then it would be too cool for me. So I mix them. And um, Van Dyke Brown, which makes a wonderful green when you mix it with yellow and orange and stuff. So uh, I'm going to start out. I won't kill myself in my shoes. I'm used to painting in my bare feet. Take them off. So um, I'm going to start up on the sky. I'm going to take a bunch of gesso and a bunch of the light body white because I want a dark in the background. And I, I've got a big sky there I want to cover, so um, I want a good bit of volume. There we go. And I'm going to add to that the burnt sienna to tone it down and give it a purpley gray kind of a color. Cerulean can be really strong by itself. That's a nice green, but I want it a little bit bluer. There we go. Okay. So, let's just... Now see, I plan for everybody to be on that side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't see through me, so I'll just have to go back and forth. Okay. Let's get a dark in the background. And if you'll notice, my girl, that's what I think she goes with me everywhere. She's got paint all over her feet. <laughs> but she reminds me not to take myself too seriously. What did you tell me you're bored with? That is just gesso and whatever warm colors I have left over on my palette. Okay. 
And if I don't have anything left over on my palette, I've got some basics, cheap, inexpensive, excuse me, <laughs> paints that I mix with the gesso. And, and it's because I want it warm. The white canvas is too cool for me. So I start out with a mid-tone that's warm. And then everything seems to flow better from that. So this will stay kind of wet-ish. And we will get some of this on here. And also, if anything shows through, if I don't get it covered up, at least it's warm coming through. It's not that cool white blinding you when it comes in. And which is really weird because for years I painted in watercolor. Which you always, you love your whites. I did drafting for too many years. And you love your whites, but for this, it's got to be warm. That's where my uh, palm tree is going to go. So, what I want to do here is to get into my heavy body white because I want to make some clouds into the same gray. And I love looking at clouds because they can do anything. I mean, they shoot out like that and they get fluffy and they just go every which way. I, I actually spent time a whole weekend painting clouds on the ceiling, which was great fun. Did you do the whole Michelangelo? <laughs> it was my chiropractor, actually, and he, <laughs> had, he had his tables set up, and so I just shifted the tables and stood on the tables, and yeah, did that number. <laughs> And then he could give you an adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That was part of it. Yes. 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 The deal. So since this is a mixture of a soft body and the gesso, it's it's still wet. So you can do all kinds of things for blending. You can blend as much as you want. You can just set it on there and get. So I just wanted to show you that you can blend. It doesn't have to be difficult to get the paint to do what you want it to do. Lots of activity. Still blend with it. 